Well, good Friday afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining today's update on COVID-19 in North Carolina. As of today, we have had 989,338 cases, 1,501 new cases reported since yesterday, 926 people in the hospital, and sadly, 12,862 people who have died. Our prayers continually are with those who've lost loved ones or who are battling this virus. And fighting this disease and getting people vaccinated continues to be a priority. Well, today I have great news to share with the people of North Carolina. Effective immediately, we are lifting all mandatory capacity and gathering limits and social distancing requirements and most mandatory mask requirements. That means in most settings, indoors or outdoors, the state of North Carolina will no longer require you to wear a mask or to be socially distant. This is a big step forward in living our lives the way they were before the pandemic. That's good. There will continue to be a mandatory indoor mask requirement on public transportation, in childcare, in schools, in prisons, and in certain public health settings. There will be strong recommendations by the Department of Health and Human Services for people to wear masks indoors in certain public places, and Secretary Mandy Cohen will share those with you in a minute. There will also be strong recommendations from the Department of Health and Human Services for unvaccinated people to wear masks. And certainly anyone who feels better protected or who has received advice from a doctor should continue to wear a mask. Now, throughout this pandemic, I've said that we would listen to health experts and follow the science as we made decisions, that we would listen to the CDC, that our focus would be on saving lives, that we would use a dimmer switch approach to easing restrictions. We are continuing to do all of these things. And because of our strong safety protocols, vaccines, and the hard work of North Carolinians, we have been able to slow the spread of this virus and reduce deaths when other states saw surges in their cases. It's good that our metrics that we, mo that we monitor are stable or declining. Our health experts have guided us with wisdom and expertise. And this nation's scientists, including many right here in North Carolina, showed what is possible if we work toward a common goal. That common goal now, more than ever, is overcoming this pandemic through safe and effective vaccines. And now is the time to get vaccinated if you haven't. It's easy and everywhere. While today's news means that we are even closer to putting this behind us, it doesn't mean that we're there yet. The pandemic is still here, especially for those who are not vaccinated. More than half of our adults in North Carolina are at least partially vaccinated, and about 46% are fully vaccinated. That's good, but it tells us that there is more to do. I have a message for people who have not been vaccinated, and especially for those who will choose not to wear a mask. Get vaccinated now. If you don't listen to me, ask your doctor and do what your doctor tells you. With more people not wearing masks going forward and COVID-19 and its more infectious variants spreading, there's a real risk that unvaccinated people can get it. Please be responsible and wear a mask until you get vaccinated. And our Department of Health and Human Services will continue to expand their strategies to reach people who have not yet gotten a shot. At this time, I'm going to recognize our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Mandy Cohen, to share an update on these efforts. Dr. Cohen. Thank you, Governor. I'm so grateful for your strong leadership 
from day one, you listened to public health ex experts, stayed true to your commitment to be guided by evolving data and science, and always put the health and welfare of North Carolinians first. Your measured approach and the hard work of North Carolinians have saved countless lives and allowed us to take this big step forward. I'm so proud of the incredible progress we have made in beating back this pandemic. Vaccines are incredibly effective at protecting individuals from this terrible virus. And as more and more people get vaccinated, the results show in our improving metrics with lower cases, lower hospitalizations, and lower deaths. As the governor said, thanks to the good news from the CDC yesterday, safety measures like masks and social distancing will no longer be required by executive order in most settings. Consistent with CDC guidelines, there are a few settings where we will continue to require masks for everyone, including people who are fully vaccinated. Those settings are places such as public transportation, healthcare settings like hospitals, doctor's offices and nursing homes, and other high-risk congregate settings like correctional facility and homeless shelters. Masks are also still required in childcare, schools and camps as remember most children are either not yet vaccinated or are not yet eligible to be vaccinated people who are fully vaccinated can do many of the things that we did before the pandemic with the exception of these settings i just mentioned people who are fully vaccinated do not need to wear a mask or practice social distancing although they may choose to do so they also don't have to quarantine or get tested if they're exposed to COVID-19 unless they have symptoms. Unvaccinated people will still need to do these things. Now, the Department of Health and Human Services will continue to have strong public health recommendations in alignment with the CDC's new guidance to continue to protect one another until more people are vaccinated. Masks are strongly recommended for everyone, regardless of vaccination status, in large, crowded indoor events like sporting events and live performances. People who are not vaccinated should wear a mask and maintain distance in all indoor public settings. We will continue to have recommendations for how businesses can best protect their employees and customers. Public-facing businesses should post signage reminding guests to socially distance and wear a face covering if they're not fully vaccinated. Remind employees to self-monitor for symptoms of COVID-19 and have a plan to immediately isolate and remove sick workers and clean those high-touch surfaces once a day. Now, businesses may choose to continue to require that their customers wear masks. For example, we're hearing that places like Starbucks and Home Depot will keep their policies mandating shoppers and employees wear masks. Of course, the best protection is to get vaccinated. Today's announcement's a big step forward, but it's not the finish line. Just under half of North Carolinian adults are not vaccinated. We still want to reach our goal of two thirds of North Carolinians 18 and older with at least one vaccine dose. That's when we believe we'll have enough protection across our communities to be able to live more safely with this virus. As of this week, even more people can get vaccinated. Our younger teens between the ages of 12 and 15 can now get the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Young people are vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus, just like everyone else. And the percent of COVID-19 cases in North Carolinian children 17 and under has been increasing. We're working with vaccine providers, including pediatricians and family medicine doctors, to make the Pfizer vaccine accessible across the state. To find providers with the Pfizer vaccine, please go to myspot.nc.gov and filter for Pfizer. COVID-19 vaccines are now widely available across the state and in many places you can walk in without an appointment. The vaccines are tested, safe, and effective in protecting you from COVID-19 and preventing hospitalization and death. I want to thank the close to 4 million North Carolinians who have already gotten their first dose. They are protecting themselves and others and helping us get back to the people, places, and events we love. 
If you still have questions about the vaccines, you can find all the answers you need and where to get your COVID-19 vaccine at your spot, your shot, uh, sorry, your spot, your shot .nc .gov. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. Thank you and your team for your strong leadership throughout this entire pandemic. We still have work to do and we're gonna to continue to work together to get it done. Today is a great day, but the work is not yet done and people getting vaccinated will get it done. In fact, the CDC's guidance affirms that getting vaccinated is the way through this. We can take this step today because the science shows our focus on getting people vaccinated is working. But to keep moving forward and to make sure that we're helping to continue to save lives, more people need to get vaccinated. People 12 and up, people who were planning to get it but haven't made time to get their shot just yet, people who aren't sure, and even people who think they don't wanna do it. We need to try to reach all of them to turn the corner on this pandemic once and for all. North Carolinians have shown that we have resolve and the compassion to do what's needed when times get hard. And if we keep doing that, we'll get through this. Also with me today, our Secretary of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, our Director of Emergency Management, Mike Sprayberry, Mark Leinberger and Karen Magoon are our sign language interpreters and Jackie and Yasmin Materia, Mativia are our Spanish language interpreters. We'll now take questions from the media. Uh, if you can identify yourself and your station or paper, and uh, we'll take the first one. Our first question is from Ashley Talley with WREL. Thanks for letting me ask questions. Um, will businesses or municipalities or cities be able to make their own rules or still require masks um, if they want to? Yes. Uh, cities, local governments, and uh, businesses can still require masks. Uh, most of the local governments, however, have been aligned with the state uh, for most of this pandemic. So I would expect most of them to follow what we are doing. Next question. Follow up, Ashley Talley, WREL. And is there a good way to be sure that the people who aren't wearing masks do have their vaccines? Um, do you, we've talked a lot about vaccine, so-called passports in the past, but you know, how do you suggest that people are sure of that, and do you have any plans to incentivize vaccinations moving forward? Well, certainly you don't know whether people are vaccinated or not. So one thing that unvaccinated people need to be careful to do is to wear your mask. We continue to believe that any person is entitled to get a verification that they have been vaccinated that that person can use any way that they want to, to use it. I'll let Dr. Cohen uh, comment on the rest of that question. Hi, Ashley. We are still very focused on making sure we can get more and more folks vaccinated across North Carolina. I think our first effort is to make sure that vaccine is everywhere, really accessible, really convenient for folks. But we also are looking at ways to give an extra incentive to folks to go get vaccinated because we know that vaccines not just protect that individual who gets vaccinated, it protects communities and it protects our whole state. Um, so we are definitely looking at a range of options related to incentives. And I think I'm really excited to see businesses already stepping forward and offering incentives uh, around vaccines. Some are offering incentives to their own employees to get vaccinated, some time off or bonus pay. Others are offering their customers or patrons. We already uh, heard about the free donuts, free beers and others. So I, I really appreciate businesses stepping forward and helping us both raise awareness as well as incentivize uh, folks getting a vaccine. I'd encourage 
encourage everyone to join the campaign Bringing Summer Back. Um, we encourage businesses, individuals, organizations to join us, raise awareness of vaccines. It's going on right now for two weeks in May and two weeks in June. Thanks. Next question. Our next question is from Gary Robertson with the Associated Press. Hello, it's Gary Robertson with AP Governor. Um, what um, you had, it's my understanding that you had been, you had said earlier that you would hope to get two thirds of adults at least partially vaccinated before the mass mandate would be lifted. And now it's being lifted today almost completely and we're still at what 51% partially vaccinated. What changed and did the CDC guidance really take you aback from yesterday? Uh, the CDC guidance is what has changed. We had said that by the end of this month that we had planned to lift all of the capacity, mass gathering and social distancing uh, requirements. But yes, we had said that we had hoped to get to through two thirds of people vaccinated before we suspended the indoor mass mandate. The CDC uh, did a lot of research and reviewed a number of studies and what, what they showed was that if you get vaccinated, you've got a lot of protection and you also don't really transfer the virus to other people. And the CDC said at that point, it's just not necessary for people who have been vaccinated to wear masks most of the time. And throughout this pandemic, we have been following the CDC guidance. Most every time the CDC guidance changed, we would look at what we were doing and, and follow what the CDC had. Now, the, the thing that's different about us here in North Carolina and in other states is that the CDC can recommend but has not been mandating most of the time. The state, they've left it to the states to do the mandating. So we've had to be very careful about it and that's why we spent last night looking at the CDC recommendations and putting this new executive order in place. I think we've been hearing from the CDC and Dr. Fauci over the last week or so that uh, wearing masks for vaccinated people uh, was something that we might be able to do away with. So no, it was not a, a complete surprise to see what they did, but we thought it was important to go ahead and continue following their guidance and put this executive order in effect today while still hoping to get to two thirds as quickly as we can and beyond as quickly as we can, because the more people we can get vaccinated, the better chance we're gonna to have to slow the spread of this virus. Next question, please. Our next question is from Katie Peralta with Axios Charlotte. Good afternoon, this is Katie Peralta Sola from Axios Charlotte. Um, I understand that this is uh, sort of aligning with the CDC guidance and the, the newer data that came out about um, vaccinations and mask, wear, mask wearing, but how do you prevent people who are not vaccinated from using this as sort of a green light to go ahead and stop wearing masks because everyone else who is vaccinated has stopped wearing masks? I mean, it seems like it could open the floodgates. Is there any concern about that? Well, first, even though we have had mandates in place in a number of areas, a lot of what we have done has relied on the personal responsibility of people and of businesses. Uh, today, this order just increases that personal responsibility. Yes, you are likely to see a number of people who are unvaccinated uh, stop wearing masks because I do believe that there were a number of people who were unvaccinated who, because there was a rule, did wear a mask. But I think you will see more of them not wearing a mask. This just tells people who are not vaccinated that the virus is still out there and these are the people who can transmit that virus to me. I need to talk to my doctor about getting a shot. And so yeah, we expect more people not to be wearing masks and some of them would not be vaccinated. That should should tell the unvaccinated that it is time to get a vaccine right now and we hope that they will. Next question. Our next question is from Richard Craver with the Winston-Salem Journal. 
Yes, Governor, this is Richard Craver with the Lisa Center Journal. Uh, most of the questions I was going to ask have been asked already, but let me ask this one. If, um, if you get to the point where we're lifting the mandates now, did y'all feel like y'all would be able to get to that 65, 70, 75 percent vaccination level, especially with the mandate with um, the 12 to 15 year olds and probably younger than that eventually? So I'm going to let Dr. Cohen comment on that. We certainly have the two thirds as a goal, but we want to go beyond it. I'll let Dr. Cohen comment on whether she thinks we can get there. Hi, Richard. Thanks for the question. I think we all have our work cut out for us to make sure that we are encouraging folks who have not yet gotten their vaccine to go and get one, get one today. Um, and I think the fact that we are moving forward and you folks can see what benefits you can get from getting vaccinated. Not only are you protecting yourself, what we know now is that you are also protecting yourself from spreading COVID to others if you get vaccinated. So we very much want folks to go out and get vaccinated. We are currently running a campaign around bringing back summer to raise awareness of vaccines. We have many, many businesses and organizations that have joined us. You're going to see a lot um, on the airwaves about vaccination. We know the supply is there. It's in a lot of places. Please go to myspot.nc.gov to find a vaccine provider near you. Most times you don't even need an appointment. You can walk in. We want to make this convenient. So we are certainly looking towards that two thirds goal. Um, and if we are going to continue to do all the work we can to help folks feel comfortable, make sure that things are convenient, as, and as I said earlier, even look to see what incentives can we offer um, to help folks uh, take that next step and get vaccinated. Thanks. She thinks we can get there. Oh. <laughs> next question, please. Our next question is from Robin Kennedy with Fox 46. Good afternoon, Governor and Dr. Cohen. As far as the schools go, since 12 and up can now be vaccinated for those students who have been vaccinated or are getting vaccinated, will they stop, still have to wear the masks in school? Dr. Cohen, I'll let you take that. Hi, Robin. Thanks. So up until yesterday, it was really only our high school seniors that were able to even be eligible to get vac vaccination. Just starting yesterday, our 12 to 15 year olds are now eligible. So that's great news. They're starting to get vaccinated, but we know it's going to take some time. That still leaves a, a large portion of our student body who is completely unvaccinated. And as the CDC guidance said yesterday, while they recommend that those who are vaccinated don't have to wear masks or social distance, they said if you are unvaccinated, we want to continue to see you wearing masks and social distancing. And so our student population is just that. They are largely, largely unvaccinated, again, other than our high school seniors. So for the time being, we are going to continue to require masks in that setting. Of course, as we go through this, as we have the entire pandemic, we will look at our trends, look at our metrics, how many folks are getting vaccines, who is eligible for those, and what is appropriate as we go, go through. But as of today, we are keeping the mask, um, it, mask in place in school settings as as well as child care and camps. Thank you. Next question, please. Follow up, Robin Kennedy, Fox 46. The next question is just a legality question as far as the mask requirements go for, uh, did you guys make a decision not to just require masks for unvaccinated people simply just because legally you can't? do that well i think it, it's more of a practical situation uh, than anything if you had a requirement only for people who are unvaccinated then you'd have to have a way of knowing who was unvaccinated and we we don't have a way to do that now and this is where the personal responsibility comes in we're going to expect people to do the right thing those who are vaccinated we know you're pretty much protected so this gives you that opportunity, uh, whether you are outside or I anywhere else that you want to be without a mask, that's, that's going to be a good thing for those who are vaccinated. For those who are not, uh, you still have a risk of getting COVID. And we know that these variants that we have seen are even more contagious than the original COVID-19 uh, that, that came to our shores. 
So please get vaccinated. That's the bottom line. Next question, please. Our next question is from Michael Hyland with CBS 17. Hi, this is Michael Hyland from CBS 17. Going forward, how are you all advising businesses and private organizations to handle the mask requirements, given how politicized it has become over the last year, and that, as you pointed out, a majority of people in the state are not yet fully vaccinated, and there are some people who don't want to divulge whether they've been vaccinated? We're leaving the, the, the opportunity for businesses to require masks in, in their stores or their retail establishments if they want to. Uh, the department is recommending that even if you don't require a mask that you ought to have a sign uh, reminding people who are not vaccinated to wear a mask. Would you want to add anything to that? So that's, that's where the department's going to be on recommendations to these businesses. Next question. Follow up, Michael Hyland, CBS 17. Uh, thank you. I think at the beginning of the press conference, I saw the two of you come in for the first time without a mask on as this began. Can you tell us what, personally, what behaviors of your own are going to change starting now? What will you all be doing that you have not done before? Uh, would you feel comfortable going to places like a grocery store without a mask if the grocery store didn't need to allow that? Uh, the answer would be yes. If I went to a grocery store that was not requiring masks, I would not wear my mask in the grocery store. I uh, would feel comfortable going more places without my mask. Uh, I think it's a good thing. I want to abide by whatever a retail establishment uh, would do. Also would want to abide by the mandatory mask rules in those certain settings. I'll be visiting a lot of health care facilities uh, over the next few weeks, particularly vi vaccination sites, so I'd want to make sure that I wear a mask uh, during that period of time. But I, I look forward to not having the mask on any ways as much as I did before. And that's a great thing about today. I think that's a great thing for all people who have been vaccinated. Dr. Cohen. Hi, Michael. I think we've all been looking forward to hearing from the CDC that vaccinated folks can uh, feel comfortable not wearing their mask. But what I would want to mention is that, oh, you know, over the last 24 hours since that guidance from the CDC came out, I've heard from a lot of parents. And I'll remind folks that I'm also a mom of a six and a nine year old. And obviously, they are not yet eligible to be vaccinated. So I have two little ones in my home who the CDC will still recommend that they wear masks when they go to indoor public settings. We're going to continue to recommend that they wear masks in indoor public settings. And as a parent, it's really hard for my kids to understand, well, mom, why aren't you wearing a mask? And I need to wear a mask because I don't have a vaccine. So you are likely going to see me wear a, a, a mask when I'm with my kids um, to show that we are, we're in this as a family um, and that they can understand that they are, wear, they are wearing masks because they are still unvaccinated. Um, I think there are going to be a lot of settings, which I'm excited to no longer wear our, our masks. I think we were already excited not to wear a mask in outdoor settings, um, but there will still be some times when, particularly when I'm with my kids, where I, I still will be wearing a mask. Thanks. Next question, please. Our final question today is from Ruben Jones of Spectrum News. Thank you. This is Ruben Jones from Spectrum News. You mentioned, Dr. Cohen, earlier that this is not the end, but there are some people who are going to hear this press conference and hear that masks aren't allowed in most places and say, this is the end of COVID. What do you tell them? Well, I'll let Dr. Cohen answer it in a minute, but this is not the end of this pandemic. And in fact, uh, we've got a lot more people that need to get vaccinated uh, before we get to the end of this. All you have to do is look at the statistics. Uh, over 1,500 people uh, today tested positive. Uh, a num certain number of people are dying every day. Uh, there are 900 and some people in the hospital with COVID, 200 and some people in intensive care, uh, in critical care with COVID. So people who are unvaccinated are still at risk of getting COVID, and we know that this disease can be deadly. So no, we are not at the end of this pandemic. We still have more to do. 
even those of us who are vaccinated, I would encourage you to talk to your friends and family and others that you may have influence over that are not vaccinated to try to convince them to at least talk to their doctor about whether or not they should be vaccinated. And then maybe all of us together, as we increase the number of people vaccinated, then Dr. Cohen and I can stand up here and say, uh, you know, this is the end of the pandemic. Dr. Cohen. Well, I couldn't say it better than my boss and the governor and the leader of our state, but just to add that, you know, this is a, a virus that has been with us um, for over a year now. It is going to continue to be with us. And there are going to be different periods of time where we'll see less viral activity and things could change as we go into the future. I think we don't want to take away from the good news of today, which is exciting, that um, we, are, we are lifting mask mandates, that we are lifting the capacity restrictions, um, but we know that we have much more to learn and understand as we go forward into the future. You always can be checking back with us as we learn more information about the science and about the data, and you can be sure that we're going to be thinking of the health and safety of North Carolinians at every turn. Thanks. Thank you all very much for being with us today and stay safe out there.